you are solving multi-step equations. So the first one, you had different options. Some of you got rid of the three first and then combined like terms. You could have combined like terms and then got rid of the three. Either or, it doesn't matter. So let's say you combine like terms first and then got rid of the three. So subtract the three on both sides. And then divided both sides by negative nine. So the two points for all of these were um, the work and then the answer. Questions on that one? For the most part, we did well on the first section. The second question, you had to cross multiply. Whether you rewrote it first and then distributed or just distributed did not matter. Then you had to get all the constants on one side and variables on the other. Many of you subtracted to n and then got rid of 10. If you did it the other way, that's also fine. Divide both sides by 3. Negative 6 equals n was the answer to that one. What questions do we have on that one? The last one, number three, you have to combine these like terms and then distribute and be careful with your negatives. So negative. Negative 60k plus 48 minus 35k plus 63. Combine your like terms again, and we get negative 95k plus 111. Get rid of the 95 by adding it to both sides. And you've got 111 on both sides. Divide that and you get 1. Questions on that one? The second objective was about your intercepts. Number 4, you had to find where this line crossed the x and y axis and label them. So your x intercept was 5, 0, your y intercept was 0, 5. So that was two points, getting both of those correct. Questions on that one? Five, you had to solve this, put zero in for one of the variables, did not matter which one you started with. Solve for whatever's left, so this would be 6y equals 18, divide both sides by 6, and you get 3, so that ordered pair was 0, 3. Then do the same thing for the opposite. So negative 2x plus 6 times 0. The 0 goes away. Negative 2x equals 18. Divide both sides by negative 2. So that negative 9, 0 was the lot. X intercept, sorry. What questions do we have on that one? The last one in that objective, the easiest thing you could have done was plot these two points, negative 4, 0, and 0, 3. Counted the slope, go up and then to the right. Slope should have been 3 fourths. Use that and your y-intercept to write the y equals 3 over 4x plus So those two points were showing how you found your slope, either algebraically or on the graph.
and then the correct equation. Questions on that one? Go on to the next page. For the first one in 9.3, you need to first find the original. This had a y-intercept of 2, a slope of negative 3. And then find the equation that's parallel to that, so it has the same slope, but different y-intercepts. You can make that y-intercept whatever you want, it just can't be the same. And then B has to be perpendicular, so change the slope, take it, flip it, make it positive. Y-intercept can be the same, it can be different, it doesn't matter. So getting those three correct for those three points. Questions on that? Uh, the original? No. I have it down to the right. Down three. Right one. The next question, you needed your point slope form using the things given. So you have x1, y1, you need the same slope, you don't need the rest of that. This is not your y-intercept, so you shouldn't be putting that in your equation. So y minus y, uh, negative 4 equals your slope, negative 3, parentheses, x minus 5. Distribute, and you can make this plus at the same time. And then get y by itself by moving the 4 to the other side. Subtract it. So the two points for that one was all of that work and then the final answer. What questions do we have on that one? Nine you could have done with work or without work. With work, you would have had to use your horizontals. Because this is an x equals, the slope of this line is undefined but it's perpendicular, so we need to flip it. So it's now going to be a y equals, which means our slope is now zero. With the work, you would set it up just like this one. y minus 2 equals 0 times x minus 2. But when you go to distribute the 0, everything would become 0. And you would just add two to the other side. Without work, you would still have to do this same process. Know that this is this has an undefined slope. Flip it. It has to be a y equals because of the slope. Look at your y value, and that would be your equation. Questions on that one? Next objective, your compound inequalities. This was an and. You had to do everything to everything. So get A by itself by dividing. That was the final answer. And then you just need to graph it. So close circle at negative 1, open circle at 5, align in between them. So the three points for the work to solve, your final answer, and your graph. Questions on that one? Eleven, you had to solve both of these separately. So add these threes. And then keep going. Some of you stop there, but you should have divided both sides by four.
and then solve the other side. Here we can subtract 3, and then divide both sides by negative 2. Because we're dividing by negative, the direction of the sign changes, so now this is x is greater than 2. Make sure you have an or in between. These would both be open circles at 0 and at 2, one going to the left, one going to the right. These should not overlap. So the four points for solving both things correctly, getting the final answer, and then your graph. Questions on that one? Twelve was similar, except it had more work. So for this one, let's say we subtract it to k. And add a 5 to both sides. You would still be dividing. The sign would still change because you're dividing by a negative. And then do the same thing for the other one. So let's say I subtracted 4k and added 2. If that's not what you did, that's okay. Here, I'd have to divide both sides by negative, so my sign would change again. Some of you were dividing with non-negatives and still flipping the sign, so don't do that. So these will both be closed circles at negative 4 and at 0, one going to the right, one going to the left. What questions do we have on that one? On to the next page. The first factoring section, you were looking for two numbers that multiply to be the last number and add to be the middle number. So the two numbers that would work for 13 are positive 5 and negative 3. So you'll have two sets of factors. The variable will be first in both, and then the two numbers you found will go after that. Questions on that? Fourteen, you have to check for a GCF first. Look for something you can divide out of all of these. Five was that. Then the rule is the same. You're looking for something that multiplies to be the last and adds to be the middle. The only thing that multiplies to be one is one itself. So your variable would be n, and then you have plus one twice. Questions on that one? 15 was very similar. What you could divide out of each of these was 2. Then these insides were the same, so the factors were the same. So you have n plus 1 and n plus 1 right there. Questions on that one? The last one we talked about, or if you missed that, this should have been 8, not 7. So the two numbers that would work here are negative 5 and negative 3. So m minus 5 and m minus 3 for your two factors. Each factor was its own answer, or was its own point, including the GCF. 
questions on this section in general? Then the last section, look for a GCF first. If you don't find one, take the first and the last and multiply those together. Whatever number you multiply together, find the factors of that, that multiply to be, wherever that is, and then add or subtract to be the number in the middle. The two numbers that were here were negative 8 and positive 5. Rewrite this into four terms. First and last stay the same. Put in these two numbers you just found with the same variable. It does not matter the order. Then split it down the middle. Look for the GCF of the first two. If you switch them, it might be a little different until you get to the answer. But the GCF of these two would be 2R divided out of both, and that would leave us with R minus 4. Do the same thing for the other one. 5 was the GCF here, leaving R minus 4. These insides are the same, so that should be one of your final factors, and the outsides go together to make one set of factors. What questions do we have on that? So if you're trying to find the factors of 40, you would start dividing by 1, by 2, by 3, by 4, and you just keep doing that until you find two that work. Eighteen. Sorry, point first. Um, the six points were however you found this, show them however you found this, rewriting this into four, finding the GCF of these two, and then your final factor. 18, look for GCF, this one happens to have one, it's 2. Then all the rules are the same as before. Multiply 4 and 1, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 4, but add or subtract to be negative 4. The only two that would work are negative 2 and negative 2. Keep bringing down this 2 on the outside. Rewrite this into four terms. Split this down the middle. Find the GCF of these two. This would be 2R. Divide it from these two, so that would leave us with 2R minus 1. GCF of the last two, the only thing that could divide both of them is 1, but it's negative, so negative 1. And that would leave us with 2R minus 1 again. Keep bringing down this 2 on the outside, and then you're going to have 2R minus 1 twice. Do we have one? Yeah. Just because this yeah. is all in parentheses and this is all in parentheses. 19. Look for a GCF. There isn't one. So multiply 6 and 8. You're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 48, but add or subtract to be negative 49. They're close together, so 1 has to be one of your factors. Negative 48 and negative 1 would be the two numbers. Rewrite this into four terms. 6t squared minus 48t minus 1t. Put it down the middle. Find the GCF of the first two. This would be 6t. Divide 
divided out of these two, leaving us with t minus 8. Find the GCF of the last two. That would be negative 1, leaving t minus 8 again. So then inside factors is 1, t minus 8. 6t minus 1 is positive. Questions do we have on that one? Last one, find the GCF. This one was 3. And then all the rules are the same. Multiply 5 and negative 8. So you're looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 40. That also adds or subtract negative 6. The two numbers that work were negative 10 and positive 4. Rewrite this into four terms. Keep bringing down that 3. Divide that from both, and we're left with plot or y minus 2. Do the same thing to the last two. That would be 4, leaving us with y minus 2. Plus, you keep bringing down that 3. y minus 2 is one of the factors, and 5y plus 4 is the other. Have any other specific or general questions? There are two points. I could have counted down to the right or up to the left either way you got to negative three. Down to the right. Oh, so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Other general specific questions? Yes. The GCF you divided, you could use that. Yes. Other questions? Okay, so I'm going to say this first. Um, you may finish it all, you may not. We should have time in class to finish it next class as well. However, you have to get the first two objectives done by at least tomorrow. So if you don't finish it in class today, the first two objectives need to be done by tomorrow before or after school because I have to repost marking period one by Wednesday. So if you want those grades to be replaced, those should be priority. Get whatever else you can done, but those have to be done today or tomorrow. Until what time are you needing to be in? Four, unless no one shows up. So make an appointment. All right, go ahead and put your phones, smartwatches, and a calculator pocket. Clear off your desk.